Chief Judicial Magistrate Court has asked for the post-mortem report, CCTV footage and the jail and personal appearance of the jailer B.S. Mukund on duty. He's also asked for the superintendent of police to appear in person in the Chief Judicial Magistrate on 30th of June. This comes as a breakthrough in the CMO murder case as court has now taken note of the incident. They've asked for a personal appearance. Let's go across to Pranshu Mishra who joins us on the phone line. Pranshu, what is it that the court is really looking at? Well, see, is the Chief Judicial Magistrate Court. In fact, the CGM himself who is monitoring, heading this judicial probe, which was ordered by the state government. And now, remember, over the past couple of days, uh, the court has already recorded the statements of the sub, uh, some of the jail officials, including the senior jail superintendent of the jail. But now, the CGM has ordered for the order that the that the jailer on that particular day, Mr. B. S. Mukund, who was who has in fact recently. Uh, joined the jail. In fact, over the past 10 days only, he has was transferred and then he has joined at the Lucknow jail. He has been asked to depose before the magistrate, also the DIT of Lucknow, DK Thakur. He has been asked to depose before the court. But what's more important, that the CGM has now summoned the authorities to produce the, the post-mortem report in detail and also the CCTV footages of the jail on that particular day and, and related to that particular night, to a particular day when Dr. Sachan was found dead inside the jail. So that is very important. The magistrate now, the CGM now demanding for the CCTV footage. So clearly we hope that the production of CCTV footage in the magistrate's court would probably give a major lead in as far as the investigation of this case is concerned. So that's important. Uh, the jailer and the DIG uh, have been asked to make a personal appearance before the magistrate in his chamber on 30th of uh, June and also to produce the CCTV footage and the post-mortem report. This is also coming as some sort of a setback for the Mayavati government, Pranshu, keeping in mind that since the last few days, it's been absolutely silent on the triple murders. Well, as that's right, see the state government, I mean, in fact, what Mayavati said there in Mumbai was that since this case is subjudice, we won't speak. And similar was the tone being that tenor being repeated by her officials. Pranshu, I'll just interrupt you. UP Congress Chief Rita Bahuguna Joshi joins us on the phone line. Ma'am, the first question here, setback for the Mayavati government court now taking notice. You see the kind of revelations that are coming, uh, are being made public every day. And thanks to the media, which is investigating so deeply. Now, this new development that CC cameras were not working. And the fact that killed in the morning and the body was uh, recovered in the evening. All facts, uh, right from the injuries on the body to the viscera to, to the CC camera to the, uh, the uh, jailer going missing. Everything is so suspicious that it is definitely pointing out to a very deep conspiracy in the uh, murder of uh, uh, Dr. Sachan. So I think it's high time that the court uh, should take a very serious view. And we are glad that the court has uh, summoned the, the uh, officials of the jail and they want uh, to have a full view of what was happening. And I again repeat that the delay in ordering CBI inquiry will smudge up the case. And I'm very hopeful and I pray that the courts take a quick decision in this matter and allow the CBI to proceed before the evidences are damaged or destroyed. Ma'am, it's also coming at a time when the Mayawati government has started damage control. They've started the law and order situation preview. Is this too little too late? No, it is, it is a, a camouflage. And this has been happening every year. If you go by the records of the UP government every six months, they keep doing this uh, exercise, futile exercise. It is meaningless because while she is holding a, a, a review meeting, crime of a very serious nature is happening everywhere. So you see the question is, the total loss of trust and faith in the, among the people at this government. And when the government loses faith and trust, whatever it may do, it does not get retrieved so easily. That there should be a substantial change in the in the uh, scene, and if not, uh, it, I don't think it's going to uh, leave an impact on the people. In fact, for four years, she's been negligent, and if for if uh, 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 for the coming elections, she, she's trying to you know kind of uh, paint a different picture, it will not affect at all. It'll have no influence. The interesting question here, ma'am, is that the court has also asked for the police to make a personal appearance before them. What sort of information are they really looking at getting? When you say everything is so shady, he's been, he was called out of his barrack uh, for presence, that his presence was to be registered. Then he goes missing the whole day. Then the meals to the, uh, to the other uh, inmates is served early. They are put into the barracks early. 
then this crime occurs. Then a you know, kind of a report is prepared which does not match with the with, with the postmortem report. Then then the jailer goes missing. So obviously it's a very serious matter, and all evidences in a sequence lead to a, a possible strong likelihood that he was murdered. So the court obviously wants the police to directly uh, answer their questions because if uh, he doesn't go, then they would say uh, the government right. could will inquire and come back to you. 